Good morning and welcome back to the 120th. Today we're talking about large format photography and specifically I've got a new camera. This is a Stenopaker Air Force 4x5. It's a lovely compact little thing when folded. Um, really lightweight. Let's just open it up and take a look at it. Okay, there we go. So that is, how about that? That is a beautiful beast of a camera. Take the uh, cover off the back. Now, Stenopaker are an Italian camera manufacturer uh, based in Pistoia, near Florence in Italy. Uh, and they pride themselves on all handcrafted, handmade, uh, large format cameras. And they make all sorts of stuff. Uh, they've got a tailboard camera, which goes up to 20 by 24. They've got a fully articulated folding camera, which goes up to 16 by 20. And both of those will set you back about seven grand. But this is the Air Force 4x5, which is their kind of entry level system. They're what they're classed as an affordable camera. And it is quite affordable uh, in large format terms. One of these brand new will set you back about 600 euros, which is about $630 and about 550 pounds. Uh, so it's not bad price wise. It's not as cheap as an Intrepid, obviously, but it does feel like a bit of a, a step up. It's not as expensive as the Shenhaus, which will set you back about a grand, grand and a half. And not as expensive as the Chamonix, which again, you're looking at 1500, two grand. So it's somewhere in between. It's somewhere definitely at the lower end of the market. And it feels like for what you're getting, uh, it's pretty good quality. Now, full disclosure, Samuele from Stenopaker has sent me this one for free. Um, but not in exchange for me saying anything good about it specifically. What Samuele is trying to do is, is get large format out to more people and try and spread the love of large format to a wider audience. So essentially he sent me a camera in exchange for me making more videos about large format, which I am very happy to do. So Samuele, in fact, I say uh, Stenopaker uh, when I say they are a manufacturer. I think Stenopaker is just Samuele. Uh, designing them himself, making them by hand, uh, and sending them out as fast as he can, uh, fast as he can make them. Hopefully, I'll get out to see him at some point. That'd be pretty cool, uh, and see him in his workshop and see what he gets up to. But in the meantime, I'm just going to get this camera out and use it to improve my large format photography and take as many photos as I can. Absolutely not leaving behind the medium format. This channel will still be primarily about medium format, but I'm going to take this out every second video, every third video. Um, and do more large format stuff. So let's take a look around the Air Force camera, the Air Force 4x5. So you saw before that it folds down to a very respectable size. Um, not a bad footprint, will definitely fit in any of my camera bags, so no worries there. Uh, weight wise, with no film holder, um, no lens, no lens board, but it does have a tripod base plate on it at the moment. So let's just pop that on there. So it's 1.5 kilos or three pounds, five ounces. So that's not too bad, that is carryable, uh, without question. It is a bona fide field camera. One thing that makes this Air Force camera feel a little bit of a cut above is uh, the detailing. It's got some lovely features on it, some lovely extra little bits and bobs that really kind of uh, make you feel like you're, you're getting something a little bit higher quality. Uh, firstly, and one of my favorite things on here are these zeroing stops. Uh, so in order to move your front standard left and right here, we just undo these two and we're going to slide it left and slide it right. But then when you want to recenter it, it's got these two tabs on the outside, one here and one here. Push them both in as far as they'll go and it is centered. So if you see, so let's push it up the way to the right, tabs out. And we're going to push on the two tabs at the same time and when they come together and you can't push either any further your front standard's in the middle how clever is that the front standard has an even cleverer system where again it's these two tabs so let's slide them in for a minute under here you see they slide out and they sl and those and the tabs that slide out when the lens board is centered will slot into these arms so you know that your uh, that your front standard is uh, centered this way and centered that way. It's 
clever. So simple, so clever. We have a range of movements on this one. We've got front standard uh, swing, front standard rise and fall, front standard tilt. We have rear standard tilt, rear standard swing. No rise and fall on the rear standard, but for a field camera, that is an amazing set of options. It's pretty much the full gamut. Every single movement you might wanna make is available. Uh, it takes a standard Linhof board, and I have been busy printing um, some boards so that I was ready when the camera arrived. So here we have my uh, Schneider 210 f5.6. That is mounted and ready to go. I've also got the 90 mil and the 135 mil. Uh, so I've loaded some sheet holders. Oh, the other thing that Samuel has sent me, which is a new, a new addition to his range, is this, and that is a Stenopaker film holder. Entirely 3D printed, including the dark slides. So, very lightweight, and hopefully will uh, do the job. I think I go black and white though for this first shoot. I'm quite looking forward to shooting some black and white. I've been shooting a lot of color recently and I'm getting a little bit fed up with the C41 process. I really wouldn't mind developing some black and white. So my plan is I'm not gonna do anything too fancy for this first outing. I'm gonna head out to uh, the hills near me, do a bit of walking, see what I see, and give myself a chance to just get used to this camera, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, so I've got some film holders loaded, and I will see you out there. Right then, we are out. Uh, we are in the woods, somewhere in the Cotswolds. Uh, this is kind of the, the edge of the Cotswold escarpment. But I've just seen there's a, there's a, a frame just here, which is, so these two trees and this really old beach behind. Uh, a lovely kind of gnarled old beach. So I think we're going to go portrait orientation. We're going to go around it here like this. So time to get out the new camera. I'm going to start off with the 90mm lens. I've checked on my uh, viewfinder phone app. It's somewhere here, something like this. So that's really handy for checking what I'm doing before I set up. Okay, so that's the primary setup. But let's put on the uh, the 90 mil and see what it looks like. Oh no, this is on the wrong lens board. I didn't change it. Ah shit. Right, we do not have a 90 with us today. We've got a 135 and a 210. Right, so we've got the 135. Um, the one that uh, started this whole large format journey with came off the uh, 19. 20s like ideal so next step so this um the stenopaker actually comes with this cover there's actually a quite exciting thing here that i'm about to uh, reveal i have a proper dark cloth check me out I'm like all you know proper and stuff i can't remember the brand but i'll stick it in the description for you okay here we go i need to rotate the back so this whole back comes off, rotates, and then magnet back on. It's pretty, pretty slick actually, or oh, works very well. Yeah, half a second at f18. So you know well, let's just check the um, the timing of this lens. So let's um, cock this shutter, and we're listening out for half a second. half a second so then we're gonna hand time so let's go with a um let's go with the delta here put you down go on with this so first shot with the uh stenopaker here it comes half a second one two three and four Let's move on to a different spot. Let's see what else we see in these woods. Right then, we have arrived at another uh, potential spot. So we're here now. I think something, something more like this, something like that. Well, let's do 135 first, and then we will um, try the 210. Right, dark slide out. And we're gonna go chun chun. Yeah, ready, here we go. This time, let's do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do a sheet of foamer. The foamer is in the uh, this new Stenopaker 
um, 3D printed film holder. So that's cool. Let's see how that fares. Dark slide out. And we're gonna go a full second. One, two, three. Open, close. So we're gonna move on somewhere else now. I think I'm gonna switch over to the 210 now. Oh, I said I might do a 210 here actually, didn't I? Let's do that, let's put the 210 on and get a shot up here. Right then, into place now we have the uh, Schneider Kreuznach Simar S 210mm f5.6. Dark slide out. Here we go. And let's pack up and move on. On to the next. Right then, we are ready for our next frame. And that is here, kind of shooting back down the path. I'm lined up about here. And then I'm gonna go up onto that ridge over there and just do some proper landscapes before knocking it on the head. Right, oh, I think it's somewhere here. This tree in the foreground. Could do with the, uh, the 135 back on here. One, two, three. And that will do. It's getting super windy out here. That is the end of my uh, first outing with the Stenopeka Air Force 4x5. Right then, I'm back. Um, really happy with how the camera performed there. I thought it did a cracking job. Really, really pleased with my new bit of kit, my new toy. Um, slightly boring photographs, but, uh, well, I think they're boring. This is this whole landscape thing is something I need to address this year. It's one of my, my goals for 2023. Sort out my issue in my head with landscape. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna fix that, but I'm gonna address it and see if I can, uh, what, put it this way, I love going out on hikes. I love putting my camera in my bag and, and getting you know togged up out in the rain and marching across the hills and up mountains and whatnot. And so I want to love landscape photography. I really want to find it interesting and exciting. And I don't know why I don't. Um, I enjoy being out there. I see things when I'm out there that I look at and think, that's a nice frame. And then I, I take that photo and I come back and I look at it and go, am I taking shit photographs? Am I just not seeing this right? Am I not understanding? You know, am I not, am I not getting the wonder? Am I, am I doing down my own work? Uh, I don't know. So I'm gonna look into that and see if I can figure out a way of lighting that spark. Um, for landscape photography. That's a big goal for this year. I think a lot of my issue is, is uh, having a point of focus. And I don't mean a focal point. I mean a, a, something in the image that is interesting. So I feel like the, the landscape photos that I take, most of them are just a nice backdrop. Um, you know, an image should tell a story. What I feel like I've got is I've got a lot of scene setting but no plot in my landscape photographs. So anyway, more on that another time. There'll be a lot more kind of digging and delving into what the hell's wrong with my brain when it comes to landscape photography. The camera performed really well though, really happy with that. Slightly frustrating that I didn't have the 90 mil with me. That I've, I have now mounted that onto the correct lens board. Having that extra width would have been good. Interestingly, the Stenopeka, um, according to Samuele's literature um, on his website, you can actually go down to a 65 mil on this, which is crazy. I don't have a 65 mil lens, but I feel like I need one now. So let's start looking for one of those. It's exactly what I need to do, right? Instead of getting out and taking photographs and getting better, um, I'm gonna go and spend more money. Maybe I'll go out on a few more trips before I decide and decide whether I need a 65 mil lens. I don't know if I do, I'm just excited that it'll do it. Film holder. Uh, perform really well as well. I was a little bit nervous. It all just feels a little bit, you know, a little bit 3D printed, um, but that's because it is. And they're quite a bit lighter than my standard film holders because there's no metal in them, because it's all plastic. They're quite a bit lighter. Now, a saving of a few grams. Let's actually, let's weigh them. So a standard Toyo um, film holder is 194 grams. This Stenopeka 
film holder is 149 grams. So we're looking at a weight saving of about 50 grams per film holder between the Toyo and the Stenopaker fully 3D printed one, uh, which 50 grams is, is nothing, right? But uh, if you're carrying 10 film holders, then that's half a kilo, that's half a kilo weight saving. So there we go, that is the Stenopaker camera. Um, lots more coming up with this camera. As I said at the beginning of this, this video, this does not mean that I'm turning my back on medium format, not by any means. Medium format is still my bread and butter. Most of the videos that you see on this channel will be medium format. Just getting a bit more large format in um, and trying to get better at it, trying to learn a bit more, trying to instill some kind of excitement for landscape photography. Uh, so come along on my journey as I do that. So loads of really exciting stuff coming up on the channel. More large format, loads of medium format. We've got the 3.4 speed graphics going to be coming out very soon. We've got a Mamiya 645, which I have recently repaired and is now working perfectly. So I'm going to be getting that out for a shoot. Uh, Balder Super Baldics up there. Uh, and various other bits and bobs. Lots of folders are going to be coming out soon. Uh, the weather is starting to get a bit more interesting. We've had nothing but rain here in the UK for several weeks, but it's now starting to clear up. We're getting some sun and we're getting some frosty, cold, crisp mornings. Uh, so lots of opportunities. We're getting more daylight hours. So it's all happening. I'm excited. Uh, it's just going to be a big year this year. Lots of plans, lots of exciting stuff coming up. Come along with me. I'll see you for the next one. Cheers. Bye.